I'm Shelly Turner with the Builderall team. In this video, I'm going to work with you on building the header of our website. But before we do, I want to help you understand the idea of rows versus lines versus columns. So when we're working in our website, we need to make sure that we're paying close attention to rows, columns. The most important thing to understand is that every single line, which goes from one side of your web page to the other side of your web page, is a defined value of 12. So if I've got two columns that are evenly spaced together, that means that this column is a defined value of 6, and this column is a defined value of 6. So if I right click it and define the value as 6, and then I right click this one and define the value as 6, then you'll see that they are evenly spaced because 6 plus 6 equals 12. So watch what happens if I leave this column a 6 but change this one to a 7. So let's try that out and see what happens. You see what happened? We now have our column that is 6, that's this one right here, but our column with 7 was thrown down into the next row. It does that because 6 plus 7 is a defined value of 13 and that just won't work for going all the way across. So what it does is it throws that column into the next row. So what I can do is just click Edit Row and choose to delete that row. I go back to the one row, but it only has one column in it. This area right here has not been defined at all. So I can go back and right click this column and copy it, and it creates a new column for me so that I have two columns now that are each defined value of 6. So together, they're a defined value of 12. So that's what we're going to work with inside this website, is making sure that every single row in our web page has a defined value of 12. If it has more than 12, it will create a new row and take any columns that don't fit and put it in that new row. Okay, so now let's start working on our header. So the first thing we need to do is bring in our logo. This is not our logo, so I'm going to click it, and I'm just going to hit the delete button, and that deletes that image. Now I'm going to go to the plus sign, and I'm going to go to image, and I'm going to click that first one, image, and it puts an image placeholder there. And what I'm going to do is right click it and do change image. And now you should have actually downloaded all of your pictures and now you can upload them onto your media folder which is the digital file repository. To do that all you do is click upload and then choose the location that those pictures are at on your computer and then OK and it will upload all of these pictures. I've already uploaded all of my pictures so I'm going to find the picture of the fruit shop and I'm going to click that picture and click confirm. Now it's pulled it in, but you can't see it because the logo is actually white. So if I click it and drag it up, you'll see that it starts to appear when I put it on the blue background. Also notice that when I drag it, wherever my mouse is, that's where this picture can be dropped. So my mouse is in the center of that first column. That means if I drop it there, it's gonna be attached to the first column. If I click it and drag it again over to the second column, you see where the mouse is? When I go right over into the second column, now I can drop that picture and it will be attached to the second column. So I want this attached to the header. So I'm going to just click the header and make it a little bit taller by using these handles. There we go. And now I'm going to find my picture again. And I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. We don't need it quite this big. So I'm going to click the handle and drag it to make it smaller. And once I get it to about the size that I want, I'm going to click and drag it again. And I'm going to bring it up here to the top. And we might make this a little bit taller. There we go. And now we've got our logo in there perfectly. So I've got my logo in there. And the next thing I want to do is add the icons. I can take this picture right here. It's an image. And I can click it to activate it. And I can hold my control button down and hit the letter C, that means copy. And then I hold the control button down and hit the letter V, and that's paste. 
So I just copied and pasted this image, just as easy as that. I'm gonna roll it over to here, and now I'm gonna right click it and change image. I'm gonna go back to my quick start folder, and I'm gonna pull in this image right here. I'm gonna make it smaller by clicking the handles and dragging it down. And now I'm gonna control C, control V, control C, control V, and I've got two more images. I'm going to right click one of them, change image, and then I'm gonna pick my other icon in my quick start folder. That changed that one. And I'm gonna right click, change image, and choose the last image, the last icon, and confirm. So these are a little bit big. I'm gonna make them a little bit smaller by clicking those handles and dragging them down. That's probably pretty good right there. So now I've got my icons in there. Now let's add some text in there. So I go over to plus and text. And when I'm looking at my text, I've got several options. I've got title text, which is the same thing as H1, H2, H3, and H4. That's important to know for people that use SEO or search engine optimization. Then we have paragraph text, including the body large and the body medium and the body small. I'm gonna choose body medium for this one. So I'm just gonna click it and it appears right there. So I'm gonna drag this up so we can kind of see it in the blue. And then I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and paste it two more times because I'm gonna need three of these. So I'm gonna control C, control V and control V. Now I've got three copies, that's exactly what I need. So the first one, I'm gonna pull up my notepad and I've already typed in exactly what I need. So I'm just gonna highlight it and control C for copy. And then I'm gonna click and double click inside of that box to get my cursor in there. Then I'm gonna triple click to highlight all of it. And I'm gonna hit control V and it pasted the information from my notepad. Then I'm gonna go ahead and make this shorter. We want this closed in just like that. So the next one, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go in here, get this information. I'm gonna control C to copy, and I'm gonna click inside of here, double click to edit the text, triple click to highlight all of it, and then control V to paste. And then I'm gonna click outside of it and then back on it again so I can drag that handle and make it shorter. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the last one. So highlight this information here, control C for copy, click on the box, double click to put my cursor in there, triple click to highlight everything, and then control V to paste. And then click outside of it, and then back on it, so I can actually make this smaller. All right, so now we have all of our boxes, and we need to go ahead and start formatting so that it will actually look good on this particular screen. I need to have white, so I'm gonna go ahead and click, and then double click, and then I'm gonna highlight all of it. And I'm gonna go over here to where I can change the text color. And I'm going to click the down arrow and choose white. And I think I want it bold to make it really stand out. And I'm gonna double click in here. I'm gonna highlight all of it. Click the text color icon and choose white and bold. And then here I'm going to double click to go inside of it, highlight all of it click the text color icon and choose white and bold. And now I've got everything changed to the right color. I've got my icons in there and I can start lining things up a little bit. But before I do, I think I wanna change the background color to the right color, which is the red color. So let's go to edit row and background line and color. And now we have the choice of several different colors, but I'm gonna go ahead and grab the exact color of the original website. So I'm gonna change my screen to that exact website. And here's that red color. And I've got my color picker here. The color picker is available in the Google Chrome Web Store. Just be very, very careful when you download and install extensions because sometimes they can have malware or viruses attached to them. So make sure you're getting an extension that has a good rating, and you always need to make sure that you have good antivirus on your computer before ever installing any Google Chrome extensions. So I'm gonna click on that color, 
and it gives me the exact color. So I'm going to copy that. So control C to copy that and it's ready to go. So I'm going to go back to my HTML editor. I'm changing the background color. So I'm going to pick color and then I've got my color picker. I'm going to choose more colors and right here I can highlight all of that and paste that color picker that I had and it puts in the exact color of the website that I was looking at. So that's how you can pick colors so easily. Also on my notepad, I'm gonna go ahead and put that color in there so I can use it again later. All right, so I've added a color picker and then red header and then the exact number that I need to be able to change that color to the correct color on my editor. So I'm gonna just keep that available because I'm gonna use it again. And now I can start kind of manipulating these things. So let's take a look. We've got on the home page, we've got the location first and then the time and then the email. So let's go ahead and see if we can edit that. So location, time, and email. And then this is the location, this is the time, and this is the email. That's wonderful. But now let's go ahead and space it in a way that is very organized. I'm going to go to my ruler. And you see that I've got a ruler here. And I can click on that ruler on the right-hand side. And it creates a straight line for me, which is a guideline. So I can actually line things up exactly how I want them. So I'm going to go ahead and try to line up these words exactly the way I want them. It does have a snap to. If you notice when I get close to the line, it snaps to the line. And now that I've got my lettering straight, I can pull it down a little bit and we can line up the icons, make sure that they are lining up correctly as well. Also, you have the power to not only move these icons with the mouse, but you can use the right arrow, the left arrow, the up arrow, and the down arrow. And you see how it moves it just ever so slightly. So if you're working with the mouse, sometimes it can be very difficult to move things just a tiny bit, and using those arrows might be very helpful. So let me move this up just a little bit. I'm gonna move the icons up just a little bit more. Okay, so you can see that now we're starting to get the semblance of a pretty organized website, and we can definitely deal with spacing and stuff like that as we go. Once you've lined everything up the way you want them, you can actually right-click that guideline and it will disappear. Just click it again and it will reappear and you can put it wherever you want. Okay, so now we've got everything pretty well lined up. The next thing I can do is pull up these columns so that they're a little bit closer to these elements. So I'm going to click on one of the columns and I'm going to grab the handle and move it up closer, just like that. So that way I have the ability to shorten that header a little bit so that it doesn't take up a whole lot of space. Okay, I can also get rid of the ruler and I can kind of see how it's going. Another thing I can do is I have to have room for my social media icons and my menu. So I'm going to go ahead and create another line. And so all I'm going to do is just copy this one. You see how it made a second copy? And I don't need the fruit shop logo, so I'm going to click on that and hit the delete button. And now I don't need this in the middle, right? I don't need it in the middle. So I'm going to right click it and I'm going to choose to move it. And I can use these icons here to go backwards and forwards. So if I click this one, it moves it to the end. If I click this one, it moves it the other way. So the first icon moves it to the right. The second icon moves it to the left. It's kind of the opposite of what you would expect. But the important thing is that I can manipulate that to move it around. So now let's talk about defining our values because these columns are not defined. If I right click, there's nothing to tell me what they've been defined as but I want two columns on this first row. So if I want two columns and it has to be a total of 12, then each column has to be a value of six, a defined value of six. So I'm gonna go ahead and click down and choose six. And now I'm gonna click this one and choose six. And what that did is it sent the next column down into the next line or the next row. We have a new row right here. So now I can start manipulating this new row to do what I need it to do. So 
this is where I'm going to put my menu and I'm going to put my social icons in here. So let's go ahead and grab the social icon. So I'm going to go to plus and then social and I'm going to go ahead and go to social bars. And here's a bunch of different bars. Remember we're replicating the original site. So this was the bar that was on there. So I'm going to go ahead and click that and it adds it to the site and it's pretty big, right? We don't need it to be that big. So I'm going to right click it and I'm going to go to edit. This is where I can change the way it looks and I've got three different ways to do that. I can change the size so I can go smaller or I can go bigger. I'm definitely going to go smaller. So I'm going to put it right about there. And then the spacing, which is the spacing between each of the icons. So I can go closer together and I can go further apart. I'm going to go ahead and keep it about what it was before. We'll say 15. Perfect. And then position. I can choose for this to be a horizontal line or I can change it to vertical, meaning up and down. I'm going to keep it horizontal and I'm going to click confirm. And now I've got it about the size that I want it and I can put it where I want it. Now one thing I want you to know is that we need to try to stay inside these outside guidelines. If we go outside of that, our item won't show on the device. So we need to make sure we're inside those guidelines. So right here, we may want to put this right at the edge here. But if you notice, there's only one column. And I'm going to have a menu on this line as well. So I need another column. So I'm going to put this up here for a second and make sure that the column's empty. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to add column. And now I should have two columns. Perfect. And I'm going to put my social media right here at the top right hand corner. And then I'm going to go ahead and drag this up. And now I've got a little, little bit too much space between these items and the share. And there's our guideline right there. We'll put that right about there and put everything in the middle. And let's see how that looks without the guideline. Oh, that looks really good. So now we've got that taken care of. And we'll put the social media so it lines up about with the end of this right here. And then we'll get rid of our ruler and everything is looking great so far. Let's make sure that we've got everything as far up as it can go so we can shorten it and bring it up a little bit. And then this one, we'll bring it up a little bit. Great. Fantastic. So now we've got everything lined up. I actually think that these icons can be a little bit smaller. So let's go ahead and go to edit. And we'll change the size. There we go. Put it at a 37. Confirm. And we'll scooch it all the way over here to right where the end is right there. So now that looks a little bit better. We've got another item that we're going to do, which is put in the menu. And we'll put that right there. But we're going to do that uh, later on in building the website. So, so far, we've created the header. And we're strictly working with desktop view right now. Later on, in another series of videos, we'll actually edit for the mobile and the tablet, but right now we're only editing for desktop and we've got our header just about done. So we'll go to the next step and I'll see you in the next video.